Hello friends! Today I'm going to show you how to make a do-it-yourself pottery wheel. For my supplies, I used a mop bucket and then some recyclable containers. The main thing you need this bucket for is this. This little spinning part of the mop bucket is what is going to make our pottery wheel actually spin, so it's important that it's this kind of bucket. You just use your foot to pump the pedal and that makes it spin, and you can even use the mop to clean up afterwards. You'll need some materials to build up your platform so you have a surface on which to throw the clay. I'm using this Folgers can because it fits kind of perfectly in there. I had to find a way to make the Folgers can stay put inside of there. I didn't want to glue it, so instead I made some holes using a hammer to get a starter hole and then a drill to make the hole go all the way through. That way I could attach the Folger can to the little basket inside using zip ties. Just the Folgers can by itself wasn't going to be tall enough and also the bottom of it wasn't going to be flat enough to spin my clay on. So I'm also going to be putting a paint can on top of that. And to attach those two, I'm putting more holes to zip tie the paint can together to the top of the Folger can. Sounds crazy, I know. I decided to make four sets of holes evenly spaced around the tops and bottoms of these containers and then use these kind of zip ties to put them together. I just had these two sizes, like the really little ones and the really long ones. So what I ended up doing was I used the little ones and I, I attached two of them together so they would be long enough to get that folders can and the paint can to attach to each other. And as you can see, you just slip those through and I would attach them loosely at first until I had all four of them attached, then I could go around again and tighten them more when I was sure that I had the two containers positioned the way I wanted them. Now I'm ready to put this whole thing in here and actually attach it to the basket inside so that it's gonna stay put when I spin it around. I'm using my long zip ties for this. I have four of them evenly positioned around the bottom of the Folgers can. And this was a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I went through the little basket notches and then attached the zip tie and gradually tightened it down. Yay, you guys, now it's spinning, except those little zip ties are gonna start hitting me like a weed whacker. So we're gonna tape those down so we don't have that problem anymore. Okay, now comes the moment of truth because I'm gonna actually try to throw some clay on this crazy little wheel that I've made and we're gonna see how it turns out. Now I just want you guys to know as well, this idea is not original to me. I saw some things on Pinterest, a couple of blog posts where people tried a similar thing. Uh, mainly what they had in common with what I'm doing is that they used a mop bucket as their base and the mechanism that caused their pottery wheel to spin. But I wanted to try it for myself and see if it would really work and see if I could make any improvements on it. And throughout this experiment, I definitely found some things that needed to be improved upon. For one thing, saw how wobbly the wheel was just there. There is a lot of wobbliness and wonkiness to this potter's wheel because there's nothing at the top really holding it steady. So I'm working on some ideas of how I could incorporate maybe a splash guard that also helps keep it sturdy and centered. I have thrown pottery before on a regular electric wheel. And what I found that was that this wheel was actually more difficult to throw pots on. Um, once I was able to center the clay, it didn't want to stay centered unless I continually kept my left hand on the clay, basically keeping it centered the whole time due to the problem with the wheel being wobbly. Another challenge was that the pumping motion that you have to do with your foot is kind of constant. With an electric wheel, you just press your foot down on the pedal like you're driving a car. But in this one, if you stop pumping the pedal, it stops spinning around. So you're kind of having to keep one side of your body still to keep it centered. And the other side of your body has your right foot, you know, pushing this pedal and making all this motion. So you have to sort of really <laughs> control what your body is doing to try to keep the motion of the wheel going, but not make it too wobbly. And because of these challenges, you're gonna see my first little pot was kind of a fail, but you know, that's all part of the learning process, so we're okay with that. I tried to sort of clean this little pot up, but it just died, like look at it, it's so sad. Now we're about to see a third problem that I came across, and that is that I just went ahead and threw this pot directly on the top of, well, it's actually the bottom of this paint can, which had some little texture differences. It wasn't perfectly smooth and the pot really, really wanted to stick 
to this surface and I wasn't able to successfully lift the pot, even if it had turned out better, I wouldn't have been able to lift it off of there without basically destroying it. So here we go. It's destroyed. Here's a closer look at this sad little guy. His walls are uneven. He's all wonky. Sorry. He's going back in the pile. So the best way to really fix that last problem of the clay sticking to the surface of the wheel is to use bats. Those are little removable kind of like plates that you throw the clay on. And then when you need to take the clay off of the wheel, you just take the whole top off and you can cut under the clay with the wire like you saw me do, but you can just leave it on the bat while it dries. And as the clay dries, it sort of separates and will easily come off of the bat later. And in order to get a bat to stick to the top of my wheel, uh, most bats have a little hole or like a little um, indentation on the bottom of them that kind of clicks into a, a little peg. So I would have to insert a screw or a peg or something on the top of the wheel that would fit the bats that I'm going to get. So I'm going to kind of look around for my options there and hopefully that will solve my problem. Of course, after my first pot being a disaster, I wasn't going to give up. So I started another one, as you can see, and already it's getting really bad. It's getting really wonky, you guys. I tried to save it and I tried to pull a wall up and you can see here as I'm trying to pull the wall, I took my other hand off so it's not supporting it and keeping it centered. And yeah, that didn't work out so good. As some of you might be watching this and wondering, well, why is she posting a video and including these pots that were a failure? But I think it's really important for the viewers and especially my students who are watching this to know that failure is a big part of the process. It's just part of determining how I can make my process better, how I can make my prototype more effective, what problems need to be solved. And showing that I think is important. And sometimes when you know the pot is going to be a fail, you can just experiment with some little weird details. Like, look at that. Look at this sad little pot. Goodbye. The great thing about clay is you could just smash it and wedge it together and make it again. So it's very forgiving. So when you do this, you're going to kind of splat it right in the middle. Okay. And then you want to brace your arm against your body. Now it spins this way, like a right handed one. And you've never spun, you've never thrown before. So you could try it the way I do it. You're going to have to pump with this leg while you hold it steady with this leg, with this arm. You're kind of like using this side of your body to hold it steady and this side of your body to move it. Okay? And to get it centered, you kind of have to use a little water in your hands to lubricate it, make it slippery. You can get this, squeeze most of the water out, and just kind of like burp while it's spinning. And it can, it can get it all everywhere. But I don't have it stuck on there very good at all. Like I didn't stick it, I thought you might want to do that. Here's my daughter's little vessel she made. You guys, I was so proud of her. She centered the clay herself and made this little jar. And that was her first time ever. My other daughter who is eight also wanted to try. So I centered the clay for her and then she made the opening in the clay and made it into the shape that it ended up being. She added a little spout at the end, which I don't have a picture of. I just have a picture of her working on it here in the middle of it, but she did a great job too. All in all, this little wheel was really fun to make and it has a lot of tweaks that need to be done and some improvements that need to be made. But if you want to experiment with making clay and throwing on a wheel, it could be a really fun way to kind of introduce that and play around with it and get the feel of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.